Hello, we're moving on to our next booklet of notes. This one's called Quadratic Functions. Last time we focused on linear functions, and it looks like this. If you didn't pick it up yet, go over to Venture and pick it up. It should be in the auditorium. The side door's open. Make it a lot easier to take notes. Okay, we're going to first talk about transformations. So you might say, oh no, not transformations again. Okay, it gets a little easier since you've already seen them before. We're just going to talk about transformations as they relate to quadratic functions this time. It actually makes it a lot easier to do some certain things with it. So quadratic function, you've probably often seen it written f of x equals something times x squared plus something times x plus another number. You often see that standard form. There's another form, and this one highlights the vertex. So you could call it vertex form. So when graphed, a quadratic function forms a u-shape called a parabola. And it u-shapes in parentheses, or not parentheses, quotation marks, because it's not really a u-shape. It just kind of looks like a u-shape. A u generally goes straight on each side. And you'll notice that these aren't exactly straight. They're always still slightly going outward. So it's not exactly a u-shape. It helps you kind of remember that's what it looks like. So you can graph a quadratic function by applying transformations to the parent function. There's our parent function here. You'll notice that the equation that I wrote up here, this is highlighting right here, the input. So h is affecting the input, and then the k is affecting the output. And so if you can remember from our last thing about transformations, the input affects the x value, and the output affects the y value. And in this case, if it's right at x squared, it is right in the middle where the vertex is at 0, 0. So any change to the x and the y change the, where the vertex is directly, which is a very, very important part of graphing it. Okay, so here's a little chart. I don't know if we have to really read through the whole chart. But essentially, it's showing that when you subtract, when you subtract from the input, you actually move right. And when you add to the input, you actually move left. And with vertical translations, and see this time it's not in parentheses. The k is just added at the end. See over here, it was in parentheses. So when you add, you move up. And when you subtract, you move down. So it's not the opposite. Maybe just put opposite over here. It'll get easier once you've done several of these. So we're gonna, oh, and I don't think I ever highlighted. So HK is the vertex. Let's put that down here. And notice that the H has a subtraction right here. And we'll talk about that as we're doing this example. Describe the transformation of f of x equals x squared, represented by this function right here, g of x. Now right off, you know what the vertex is. I always like to think immediately that the vertex is this point right here. So the opposite of positive 4 is negative 4. And then negative 1 is just what it looks like. You put it right there. And what that represents is a horizontal translation left. You think about it, negative 4 is moved to the left. You're talking about when you're graphing. And then it also represents, I guess we should put how many units? 4 units. And then another key point is it's a vertical translation down by one unit. And you can see that because of the minus one. And think about the y value tells you up and down, right? So if you go down one from zero, then you are moving down one. This is combining two different transformations. So let's just draw our vertex, which is at negative 4, 1. 1, so you go 1, 
one, two, three, four. Oops, I should put a point there. And then you go down one. So you end up right here. Now we know approximately, there are a few other things that we know. Because this is positive, I don't know where to write it exactly. Maybe right here. Because it's positive, we know that it opens up. So we know it's going to be a shape kind of like this. But if we want to be a little bit more accurate, we're going to graph just a couple of points. So the points that might be important to graph, so we already know that negative 1 is here, but we want to know where the next point is. It might be up here, it might be down here. So the input that's right there would be negative 3. So for your input, let's go ahead and write, I think there's room above it, say f, oh no, it's g of x now, so g of negative 3. That shows you what you're putting in for the input, and then you're going to recopy the equation, but with the negative 3 in there. The negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So that means our point is negative 3, 0. So we're going to go to left 3 and up 0. And parabolas, we're going to talk a little bit more about this over the next few days, but parabolas are symmetrical, so if you have one point there, then you also have a point right there. This is our little mirror image right here in the middle. It's called the axis of symmetry. Okay, next we're going to have, let's just find one more point so we know kind of how far it goes out. So we're going to have g of negative 2 equals, we're going to plug that in for the x, so you're going to say negative 2 plus 4 squared minus 1. Negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So your input is negative 2, your output is 3. So you go 2 to the left and then up 3. 1, 2, 3. And then notice we're 2 away from the center, which means that we're going to now put another point 2 away from the center on the other side. Whoops, not there. Ah, can't erase it. Okay, finally got that on there. And go ahead and kind of sketch your parabola. You might notice too, there's a pattern. So if you notice the pattern of the parabola, then you could just sketch that in there. Okay, now let's talk about reflections for a second. So reflections, as you can remember, are like a mirror image going the other direction. So a reflection over the x-axis means the whole thing flips over the x-axis. A reflection in the y-axis looks the same, actually, because it's symmetrical already, so it doesn't really make a difference. A horizontal stretch and shrink. And here's one thing that's important, just so you can kind of know what things look like without having to graph them all the time. When you have a number, I'm trying to find the right spot here. So when a is greater than 1, a is the number that's in front of the x squared. When it's greater than 1, it means that the parabola is going to be stretched. So it's going to be like this blue one right here. It's going to look thinner, but it's actually stretched upward. And that's why when it's greater than 1, it looks thin, but it's actually stretched. And when it's less than, well, it's when it's between 0 and 1, so it's going to be a fraction or decimal that's bigger than 0, smaller than 1. Well, the absolute value of it is, then it's going to be a shrink, which means it looks wider. So maybe put here, looks wide, and then this looks thin. And then a vertical stretch and shrink, kind of the same thing. So when it's greater than 1, it's going to still look thin. And when it's between 0 and 1, it's going to look wide. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to describe the transformation and then graph. Now these ones, these are in a simplified version. So notice that this is, the A is in parentheses. When the A is not in parentheses, which are the ones we're going to do, we're going to focus on vertical stretches and shrinks, not on horizontal at this point. So notice that the number in front of the x squared is not in parentheses grouped with the x. So this is going to be a vertical stretch or shrink. And nothing's added or subtracted, so it's not moved around at all, which means we're right at 0, 0, because we don't move at all. So another way you could write this is to kind of clarify. So I want you to think f of x equals negative 1 half x plus 0, or actually I guess I'll put minus, x minus 0 squared plus 0. So you can see that our vertex is 0, 0. So that's an equivalent statement. It's just that this is a simplified version right here. So it doesn't have to translate at all. We're just going to make it thinner or wider. Now as soon as you see the negative, then you know that's a reflection, which means it's going to flip over and it's going to be opening downward. So it's going to open downward. Not downward, downward. Because it's a reflection. Oh, I think we're losing my ability to write here. X axis, okay, reflection over the X axis. And then another key point is that it's at 0, 0. And we know that it's going to look, so since 1 half, so we're not thinking about the negative or positive, just thinking about the actual number, which would be the absolute value. So if you're thinking about just 1 half, it's between 0 and 1, which means it's, it's actually a vertical shrink. And I like to put kind of how that would look. So it looks wider. So the whole thing is shrinking downward and our outputs, um, it's hard to explain, but the output is not as high as it would be. So it looks wider. Almost as if it's pushed downward. Okay, and the thing is we don't know exactly how much downward it is, so let's Start with our vertex, and then just plot a few points. Oops. Okay, so this time we could use 1 and 2 to kind of get our points there. So we're going to say f of 1 equals negative 1 half 1 squared. 1 squared is just 1. So we've got negative 1 half times 1, which equals, let me write it down here. Oh, let's write it here negative one half. So you've got your input of one, your output of negative one half. And then for our second point, negative one half times two squared. You always square before you multiply by the other number, so because you do exponents first in order of operations. Negative one half times four, think of that as four over one and you end up with 1 half of 4 is just 2, and negative times a positive is negative. If you're having any trouble at all, use your calculator with the calculations. Okay, so we've got our input of 2, output of negative 2. Okay, let's graph these two points. So over 1, down 1 half. Over 2, down 2. Now let's think of this as your axis of symmetry. You're going to reflect over to the other side. Even though it kind of looks like a V-shape, it's always curved at the top, and it kind of goes gradually outward like that. So just imagine it's going to continue to go outward a little bit. Let me write that one. All right, those are the notes for today. And message me on Jupiter if you have any questions, and we can talk on Zoom. Talk to you later.